Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Inspirations, the weekly Nepal TV show that brings you inspiring people working in Nepal. I'm Mike Rosencrantz of VSO, and tonight we have another special guest. Angela Salt is here visiting from UK. She is the VSO UK director. Welcome, Angela. Namaste. Namaste. Let's start off by you telling us a little bit about your background, something about your family and your education. So I was uh, born in the middle of England, uh, in, a, in a city. Uh, my parents, uh, my mom was a cleaner, and my dad uh, worked as a, a builder. And um, I uh, was one of the only people in my family to leave and go to university. Oh. And uh, for the last while I've been working in uh, London, uh, and so I worked in, uh, I was a teacher to begin with, uh, and then I worked in communications, and now I just uh, start to work with uh, VSO, um, working in uh, international development. Uh, when we were talking earlier though, you were telling me you worked on the London Olympics. I did. Uh, so um, I worked for five years uh, in uh, the, uh, the UK, trying to make sure that the Olympics and the Paralympics uh, wasn't just about London, it was for the whole of the UK, to try to spread the benefits of uh, the Olympics uh, around the UK, but also uh, to try to get people interested in the Olympics and the Paralympic Games. Uh -huh. And what are some of the things you remember from that, or what are memorable experiences for you? I think uh, at the beginning of the Olympics and the Paralympics, people outside of London thought it was uh, all about London, and they didn't see any opportunities for themselves. But then um, when we talked a little and worked a little together, there were opportunities for, for example, around some of the business contracts, and maybe also some of the volunteers uh, could come from different parts and, and go to uh, London to volunteer for the Games. And then also some of the communities across the UK hosted some of the teams from the Olympic teams and the Paralympic teams from all over the world. And so we had a, a meeting of cultures and experience and, and supporting uh, other countries who were competing in London. And now you're with BSO UK as the director. And what do you do or what will you be doing in that role? So um, the uh, BSO is uh, working in over 30 countries. Uh, in Africa and in Asia and uh, one of the important things because uh, the UK is the, where it all began uh, 55 years ago this year uh, it all began in the UK sending uh, volunteers to uh, help people help themselves and change their own lives and their own communities so a big part is uh, to recruit uh, volunteers uh, another part is to raise money because we need money for the programs uh, and raise money for, to support the volunteers. And then also it's important that we communicate all of this work um, to the public and to the media and to the politicians so they all understand that uh, the role of uh, um, development and uh, making uh, development happen through volunteers. Can you say a little bit more about uh, you know, what your experience with Lamjoom, the kinds of activities people involved in, what you did, what the volunteers are doing as well. So in uh, Lanjun we had uh, a number of volunteers and I, I first met them arriving late at night. They were waiting for uh, uh, one of the local buses and uh, they often have a, a journey, uh, as you would know, of maybe an hour or maybe two to get to their um, location. And uh, so there I met, uh, for example, um, one um, pair, so uh, the UK and the Poly counterpart. They were working with uh, a mother's group um, and they were looking at different ways to uh, develop livelihoods. So they were talking about, um, uh, they had a, a project around briquettes, about buying, uh, you know, making and, and, and using and selling the briquettes. And there was a mixed experience in this group. So then they were talking, the mother's group were talking about uh, herbs, local herbs and using them and maybe, um, maybe collecting them together as a group because they don't have a lot of time. Obviously they have their household chores uh, to do and maybe school so, um, and maybe work too. Um, so the project that they were very interested in uh, as a group uh, was about the, uh, incense and uh, making and, and selling the incense. So that was a project. Um, where we met, uh, the woman was a superwoman 
she was married at uh, 40, um, and, um, but she had children of her own, and she had, um, she had a buffalo on her land, and uh, waste from the buffalo was going down a little hill, and the rain was washing it away. So the volunteer, she said that she would really like a, a shed, uh, so tin on uh, sticks to cover this area to stop the rain washing it away. So the volunteers uh, consulted with her and then they researched it and then they went off to, uh, to buy the tin and then they rolled up the tin and they carried it up the hill, the big hill, uh, and then they built the shed. Uh, and now um, it was very good to see it in action uh, and she was very happy. But because she's a superwoman, she has lots of uh, other plans and uh, <laughs> ideas too. And the volunteers were very proud of their, uh, they called it the cow shed. Yeah, the, the ICS program, it's a three-month program? Is that right? Yeah, they, they, they work for uh, 12 weeks. Um, okay. And uh, the British volunteers, uh, they come to, for example, Nepal. Unfortunately, there isn't enough funding, uh, there used to be funding, mm -hmm. for the Nepali counterpart to come to the UK. Um, but our other volunteers are um, older, with uh, skilled uh, professionals, and that's often uh, one or two years. Um, so uh, the volunteers I met who were working in education, um, they have been here for uh, two years. Um, but uh, I think they, uh, they love Nepal a lot and uh, <laughs> they, they would like to stay and uh, do more work. Kupan, the city scratch gari pani, Nagarika Harik Basi Krak like, a jaro ko nagat preskar pani, pakka paki cha. Ani Puraskar Nabarima, thus for the summer, this will can agri Top John Karikalagi, phone number Charts Hobbies, Arts of Pacha. Now, you're here on a, a short term visit to get to know Nepal. And where are some of the places you've been, and what kinds of things did you see? So, I have, uh, um, I think, just a little less than a week in Nepal. It's my first time in Nepal. And so I have uh, just uh, maybe two nights in the city here. And the rest of the time I've been out in uh, Kaski. Uh, to, um, I saw two schools there. And we have two uh, British volunteers. Uh, they have three schools each. And uh, amazing to see um, the, the children engaged in, in learning for themselves. And the teachers learning new ways of teaching the children and the parents involved in the school and the community. And then these schools will become model schools for other people, uh, other schools in the district. And then also in Lamjou, Lam Lam uh, we have um, young volunteers from the UK who are partnered with a counterpart from uh, Nepal. And they work in the communities. So for example, they work with mothers groups, uh, they work on livelihoods projects, and they also work in the community on health and sanitation projects. It's amazing. Now that, so there are uh, British young adults and they get paired with Nepali young adults. And what do you see as the benefit to that kind of, um, to that kind of program? The amazing thing about the program, it's called ICS and it's funded by the British government. And uh, you see the changes um, in the, the young people on both sides. And they both, when they speak with you, are very eager to tell you about the, um, about the benefits to them. Uh, so the Nepali will talk about how they're learning things from their counterpart from Britain, and how the community is learning. Uh, and then the uh, British volunteer will say, oh, I'm also learning. So lots of learning and, and sharing. They live in a host family. So they have a host mum and dad, and uh, host brothers and sisters. So um, you see lives being changed, um, just first hand. And do you think, you know, by having programs like that, I mean, people become more of world citizens and understand other cultures, that kind of thing? I think this is really important. The 
for all volunteers, the important thing is what they do in the country. So what they do here in Nepal is really important, that they make a, a real difference and they help people, Nepali people, change their own lives. It's not about the British doing things to Nepali uh, people, it's about Nepali people uh, having some skills shared and then doing it for themselves. But then when they go home, uh, back to Britain, or in fact we have volunteers from uh, Kenya, from Uganda, from the Philippines, from Northern Europe, their, their lives are changed and, and they bring a little bit of Nepal home. And we're going to change gears a little bit. Who in your life has really inspired you? I think the most inspiration is from very ordinary people that usually you don't know the names, but you see them every day. They work hard, no one is watching them. They bring up their family, and they behave well, and they have good ethics, and even though no one notices and no one's watching. Whenever I meet these people, I always feel that this is the best inspiration. And in your life, I mean, what, what are some of the moments that are that you really remember that really stand out for you? It's a very hard question. Um, I think um, moments when you make a real connection with someone um, in different countries when you're working together, um, and um, you, you feel like a change in your heart and in your head. Um, that, that will always be there, I think. So now, when I go home, I will have uh, Nepal in my head and my heart, and I will always be thinking about my experience here in Nepal. That's great. And is there a message you know, that you'd like to leave the Nepali people with? You haven't been here a long time, but nevertheless. I hope that VSO uh, can help people in Nepal to help themselves. We want to share some skills. Um, uh, in education and health and people uh, making jobs and livelihoods for themselves. So the most important people, the uh, most important thing that I think is I uh, uh, hope that we can share some skills and, and that they're taken uh, but then the Nepali people build on them and spread them and uh, um, this is the, the most important thing. Uh, very good. Well, Dhanibad, thank you. Um, this is Mike Rosencrantz saying thank you for joining us again, and Perry Batola. <laughs>